to you this day, Lord. I just thank you for each student that's here right now. I pray, Lord, that your words just come through this message, Lord, that it's not my words, but that it's yours. Um, I just pray that you just bless this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. So, it's been kind of a while since we've been together and been on this series of Who Do You Think You Are? So, we guys are, we're talking today about what it means to be different. Isn't that exciting? Don't overwhelm me. <laughs> I'm excited. But no, so as Christians, we are called to live differently. Like it's just it's just plain and simple in that way. Um, actually, it's not really that simple. But so we're called to live by a different standard. So in mid high, we did this thing where we kind of talked about what was what the world lives by and the things that they came up with was like, oh, listening to Top Ten on iTunes and wearing Lululemons, and apparently that's conforming to the world. But um, that was really fun. <laughs> about this. So we have, I was reading a lot about Paul. How many of you guys know about the Apostle Paul? Yeah, all your hands. Oh, or most of them. So Paul was this awesome apostle that went out, and he faced a lot of persecution. Like, this guy was thrown in jail a few times. He was being chased down, trying to be killed. He was eventually executed. He got sent to all this. He got on a shipwreck. Like, I mean, there's just all this different stuff. He has this crazy story with all these different things he faced. And all the other disciples did not live these glamorous lives. I think we sometimes live in this in this way in this realm that somehow by living for Christ, by living a life for him, by being different, that somehow we're gonna be apart from suffering, we're gonna be apart from pain, we're gonna be apart from persecution. And that's not true. Um, I have another quote, and this one is by Oswald Chambers, and this is from a Devo called My Utmost Prayer Highest. And he started with this way. With the typical view of the Christian life is that it means being delivered from adversity, but it actually means being delivered in adversity, which is something very different. So if we're living for Christ, we're being called to live for Christ. We're going to have problems. You're going to have times where people are not going to get what you do. You're going to have times where suddenly you're not popular, you're not cool, you have to step aside. And there's three times when life just sucks. Maybe sickness hits your family. Maybe someone hurts you. Whatever that is, you're not going to be delivered from that. You're not going to be prevented from having that. God doesn't just put us in this little bubble wrap unless we're like the bubble boy or bubble girl and we roll around like a hamster. No. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but it actually means that it's, he's going to be with us. He's going to be a part of us because he's operating through us. We're not just mimicking our behavior to be like Christ. Instead, he's living within us so that we can overcome his adversity, so we can come and live for him. And sometimes the road is not easy. 
I was thinking about how it's hard sometimes for us too, especially here in America, where we don't oftentimes face the same religious persecution that maybe in some other third world countries, or even in the disciples. Like, it's not like we're running around having to meet in secret basements pretending being for Jesus, or that we are going to be hunted down and executed because I say I'm a Christian. We have a lot of freedom here, and that's pretty cool. But sometimes it can be really hard to read that and be like, well, you know, looking at my life, and I was like, well, what major persecution can I share? It's not like I've ever sat there and someone has condemned me so hard for being a Christian. But in high school, for me, instead, what turned into something was more something through isolation. I was very much known for being a good goody to like a T. In fact, I didn't even hold myself to that standard. Everyone held a course because once I fit that mold, they were like, oh, that's Liz, she's the Christian girl, and we're going to keep her in that mold. So I was not always invited to things on weekend plans. Like my friends, if they were doing stuff that they thought I would judge them for or they thought that I would not take part in, they wouldn't even invite me, even if there was a hint of that. And so sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, guys, you know, just because you guys are choosing to do this doesn't mean that I am going to do that. It sucked. So my persecution in a way was I got left out. I got isolated and I found myself alone sometimes for my friends because I didn't agree or didn't follow the same path they did. But it doesn't, in the persecution level, it doesn't feel the same as obviously posting Christian for Jesus. Um, so in our verses today, in our chapters, choose to live for your desires, God gives you that option. Like, he's totally a God of choice. 
you have this option to live for yourself, but you're ultimately going to lose it. But if you're choosing to lose it now, and by lose it as in service to God and whatever he calls you to do, you're going to gain a whole new one. And we see these examples over and over again. So Paul shares this message over and over again from his letter. to so the next slide. And in Philippians 1, 27, 30, Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel, so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, stand, uh, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw, I had, and now hear that I still have. Next slide. And he died for all so that those who might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. Next slide. Boop. And it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I live now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And then we are left with this comfort from Jesus in the next verse, which is John 16.33. Uh, so during our trials and our pains, just know that they said this. I have said this to you, so that in me you ha may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. It's conquered the world. It calls to us differently, but it doesn't mean we're alone. By living differently, yes, you may face persecution. You may face times when you find yourself alone where people don't understand. And some of those people may be your friends, maybe your family, maybe a teacher or those close to you. But you are not alone. God is with you because he is a God that is working through your life. He's not just asking you to copy him, but he's living within you. And because he has chosen to save us and deliver us, we now have a life. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you again for this day, Lord. I pray that you just bless our conversation. Um, I pray, Lord, that you just be with us through the times that we're going through, the trials and the suffering that may be happening in this room right now, Lord. I pray that you just make your presence known and that you just guide us through in the